In the previous videos, we've learned about logarithms and the rules associated to them, and also about powers and the rules around them. So today we're going to do equations involving uh, logarithms and the powers and different things. And we'll have to use those rules. These are quite common ones that show up. I have four examples here. The first one and, and the third one are quite simple ones. Uh, they, this one just introduces using logs. Um, the third one then would use just the natural log. It's not too complicated. The second one involves a little trick. And uh, the third one, and the fourth one, sorry, again involves a little trick to start the question off. And then it seems quite normal. Actually, in fact, the second one here has a, has a really nice trick right at the end of it. I'm curious if anybody can see it. I'd love you to pause it, try them yourselves. Uh, I guess I'll give one clue. No, I won't. I won't give a clue. You can try it yourselves and we'll do the question and we'll see how you get on. Well, let's jump right in. Part one. This is a simple enough one. Uh, we've introduced this sort of idea already. 3 to the power of x squared is equal to 8. So we now have a tool that is logarith logarithms. And we can go ahead and destroy this tree. It's something we weren't, weren't, weren't able to do before. Before we would have had to just guess what number could be up here that would make 8. Unfortunately, it's not a nice number. It's 1 point something. It's a little less than 2, 1.9 or something. Somewhere up near there. So how do we get rid of this tree? Well, log to the base tree destroys tree. That would be lovely if this was here. So we can just cheat and put it there. Once we're fair and balanced to both sides, log to the base tree, log to the base tree, we're fair to both sides, but this side will destroy that tree for us. And we'll just be left with x squared is equal log to the base tree, we can put this on a calculator. Do not do it yet. Do not uh, use a calculator too early. This is an exactly correct answer. Um, but when you use your calculator, you have to start rounding it off. So let's finish the question first. Um, x is equal log to the base 3, 8. How, could, how do I get rid of this 2? I get rid of it by getting the square root of both sides. Or to the power of a half. Power of a half destroys the power of 2. But be careful, we do need to add a plus or minus. There could be two answers now. Two answers make, could make x squared. x could be a plus number or a minus number. So we go ahead, we, uh, sorry, this can be your final answer. This is uh, perfectly okay as your final answer. If the question asked it to look like this, or if they asked you to find the answer exactly, this would be the correct answer. But they often ask you to find the answer correct to two decimal places. Um, so that's what I go ahead and do for this one, two decimal places. So I put in log to the base tree, eight, um, and well, I'll get, I'll just equal that first, and then I will get to the power of a half, or the square root of it if you planned ahead. And the answer comes out to so two decimal places comes one point three eight, but remember it's plus or minus. So there's two answers there. The answer is one point three eight. Or the answer is minus 1.38. Let's go on to part two. Now this is a tricky one, and I would love you to try this yourself. There's a few tricks. You need, you need to know how to start the question. The, one hint might be just two different ways. And then there is a really nasty trick right at the end that lots of, most, most students get wrong. And a lot of exams don't even <laughs> grade the difference. They don't look to test you on this in a lot of times. They'll tell you at the start of the question. But I'll, I'll leave that till the end, that um, surprise. Okay, so there's two ways to start this. Again, I hope you've paused it, tried it yourself. But there's two ways to do this question. We really need to get rid of these logs. Now there's two ways. One, I usually like to have just one thing on the left, one thing on the right. It's easier to deal with. Um, whenever you're dealing with multiply, divide, logs, powers, all that. It's nicer to have one thing on the left, one thing on the right. So that's one way to do it. You know, I'll just do this question two different times. I'll, well, I'll do the first half of the question two different times. So the first way I would do this is I would get these both into one log. And I would notice that I could do this by one is famous in logs. Log to the base anything you want, we'll use five, to the power of any... Uh, 
log to the base 5, 5 is 1. Log to the base a, a is 1. We'll use 5 in this case. Minus log to the base 5, x minus 6. So this comes together by log to the base 5, 5 over x minus 6. We've log to the base 5 on the left, log to the base 5 on the right. Just like, uh, well actually not like a question we've done yet. We could get both sides, well let me do it I guess, before I take the next step, x minus 2. We, for both sides we can put them to the power of 5. I, I, I could probably write this line again, but uh, I think it's just, it'll save me a little bit of time. And remember that 5 destroys that 5, that log 5. This 5 destroys this log 5. And we're just left with x minus 2 equals 5 over x minus 6. And this is a question we can solve. I will go ahead and solve it, but first I'd like to do that all again. I'll rub this out. We remember the answer if you can, because uh, we hopefully will see it again. <laughs> if you're doing a question two different ways, hopefully it comes out the same both times. So the other thing we can do is just straight away put everything to the power of 5. Log to the base 5, x minus 2 is equal, sorry, log to the base 5, 5 to the power of log to the base 5. 5 to the power of 1 minus log to the base 5 x minus 6. Now this is all to the power of 5, okay? You have to be fair to both sides. If you're putting everything on the left to the power of 5, you better put everything on the right to the power of 5. So the left is simple, this cancels this, and we're just left with x minus 2. The right hand side becomes more complicated, but not too complicated because we know the rules to powers. The rules to powers say that's 5 to the power of 1, Minus just becomes over 5 to the power of log to the base 5, x minus 6. That's one of the rules to powers when we have 1 a minus b up here, or 1 minus 9. 1 minus, in this case, log to the base 5, x minus 6. So this, again, this 5 and this log 5 are cancelled, and we're just left with x minus 2 is equal, 5 to the power of 1 is 5, for x minus 6. The same answer. Okay, that's what I wanted to point out. So how do we go ahead and solve this? Uh, we multiply both sides by x minus 6. Hopefully the question told us, uh, well maybe it did or maybe it didn't. I'll explain why it might end up. It might have told us x is bigger than, is uh, not equal to 6. I let a Freudian slip there, let something slip there, hint. And uh, multiply both sides by x minus 6. We get x minus 6 uh, multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to 5. I'll make that nice and big over here so we can see it. We we'll multiply this out, we get x squared and minus 6x minus 2x, so that's minus 8x. And then 6 by 2 is plus 12. And then we take 5 from both sides, so we get plus 7 equals 0. Make sure you see where that 7 comes from. 12 here minus this 5. Okay, so we can go ahead and solve that. I think that looks like a nice, um, smooth uh, factorization. Seven and seven and one was the only numbers that could make seven. And thankfully that does make eight, if they're both minus. So we get x is equal to one, or x is equal to seven. Now here's the trick if you didn't find it yourself. This question only has one answer. This question, oh, that was the, the hint I was gonna give you at the start that this question only has one answer. So there's a problem, we got two answers. Now, you, I guess a, a top student, a 100% student is expected to know that there's only, one of these does not work. But honestly, few students do, and most in most exam situations, they will tell you there's only one answer. They'll tell you, in fact, that x has to be bigger than six. So let's see why. Something we should usually be doing at the end of our, our answers. This question, we should have really put it back in here and tested if we were right. And here, we should put it back in and test if we were right. Let's do 7 first. 7 minus 2 is 5. Thankfully, this is a nice, easy number to do. Log to the base 5, 5 is 1. And 1 is 1. 1 equals 1, that's fine. So we really just need this to equal 0. 
um, because there's a one here, a one here. So we need this to equal zero. Seven minus six is one. Log to the base five of one. Well, log to the base anything of one is zero. So yes, this works. Uh, we get one equals one minus zero. That works. Seven does work. It does uh, solve the answer. Let's see if one does. Let's put it back in. Log to the base five. Um, one minus two is minus one. Okay, here's our problem. Log to the base five of minus one. You can go ahead and put in your calculator, but you're not going to find an answer. It's going to tell you an error. And the reason for that is all log functions, I'll draw, um, well, yeah, I'll draw uh, x and y equals log to the base five of x here. And all log functions look like this though. They, net, they, they start off at, when x is near zero, very close to zero, the answer here will be my, near minus infinity. When it doesn't actually go flat up here, just so you know. It stays going up, it just goes up slower and slower. But when x is really big, you will get infinity. It's just, your cal you can't put a big enough number in your calculator. If you put in um, log to the base five of a billion billion, the answer will be quite small, but it does actually eventually get to infinity, just very slowly. But either way, this graph never shows anything over here when x is minus. Because when x is minus, it doesn't have an answer. It just doesn't have a solution. So you are expected to know that. Well, your calculator already knows it. So if you were testing your answers, you would find out that this wasn't a solution. So that's the trick to the end of that. You probably wouldn't lose marks. Because most exams would help you a little by saying x is bigger than 6. It's also bigger than 2, but bigger than 6 is, has more information than bigger than 2. So that's the only one. Um, or sometimes exams just tell you something along the lines of find the solution. That's a hint there's only one solution. Okay, let's uh, move on to part 3. There's no great trick in part 3, but again, I'd like you to try it yourself e to the power of x plus 2 is equal to 7. We just have to, as in part 1, we just need to get log to the base e of both sides. x plus 2 is equal. But remember what log to the base e is. We, we write it so often, we have a little short version of it. We just write natural log of 7. We just write natural log. Well, not sorry, not of 7, I'm sorry. Natural log. Well, yeah, natural log of 7 over here. Uh, we just write natural log, ln. So this cancels with this, and we just leaves us, we just leaves us x plus 2 equals natural log of 7, which is just x is equal minus 2 plus natural log of 7. Now, if the question asks you to get this to two decimal places, put this in your hogler, minus 2 plus natural log of 7. But very often it won't. Very often it will ask you to find the exact answer. Very often, and that will be this, very often it will ask you to find the answer in the form of, it likes to say things like A plus B natural log of C. So in this case, A is minus two, B is one. There's nothing in front, well, there's a one in front of the natural log. And C is seven. Or it might even say, find the exact answer. This is the exact answer, not a decimal place, not to the five decimal places, not to ten decimal places. This is the exact answer. So I'll go ahead and leave that there. Um, and we'll move on to four. So the, the, tr the only trick in this is to how to start it. You see it quite often in questions. Uh, the hint would be, we often see these with e to the power of x or e to the power of 2x, which is a very similar trick to how to do this question. There's two ways to do this. We can replace e to the power of x with a y. Lots of students like doing that. Um, minus x equals zero. We don't necessarily have to. First, I'll do the trick first though. I think it's, uh, let me clear this up. I'm sorry, e to the power of minus x that is. The only trick here is, I would like e to the power of x, e to the power of x everywhere. I don't want this e to the power of minus x and e to the power of positive x. They're different numbers, but they are fairly closely related. 3 to the ex minus 7 plus 2 
Something to the power of a minus, we've learned about that in powers. That's one of our rules. That just becomes e to the power of plus x on the bottom. That's what the difference of a minus does. It, may, it brings us above or below the line. Now at this point, students do find it, most students do find it easier to not write e to the power of x, to write y equals e to the power of x. You don't have to, but I'll go ahead and do this idea. Um, instead of e to the power of x, if I wrote 3y minus 7 plus 2 over y equals 0. I would expect a student to be able to do this now. I would expect a student to look and say, I need to multiply everything by y. We'll destroy this. And we'll get 3y squared minus 7y plus 2 equals 0. But you know what, I'd like you to maybe just have a look what it's going to look like without doing this bit. So just uh, to remind you here, this is just a quadratic that you could go ahead and solve. Let's try and do it without uh, this trick of the y, because it really just makes it look a little neater, which is good sometimes, but I would like you to be able to abstract your answer. So in this case, let's multiply everything by e to the power of x. 3 e to the power of x squared. This 2 can come in, but it'll, it'll look a little better out here, actually. Minus 7 e to the power of x plus 2 e to the power of x cancels equals 0. e to the power of x times 0 is 0. This is still just a quadratic. This is, whether this is a y or a e to the power of x or a p squared or a p to the power of 19, like, it doesn't matter. It's still just a quadratic. It's something squared. Um, minus a number of somethings plus no somethings equals zero. It's still a quadratic. e to the power of x times e to the power of x will make this bit. I'll make it to, um, I'm sorry, e to the power of x times e to the power of x will make this. We need the 3 here. Let's put a 3 in. 3 e to the power of x times e to the power of x will make this bit. What will make the 2? Well, it could be 2 and 1 or 1 and 2. I can see the answer though being 2 multiplied by 3 makes 6, 1 by 1 makes 1, that'll get me to 7. If they're both a minus, I'll get a plus here, and I'll get a minus 7 here. So 6e e to the power of x minus, sorry, minus 6e e to the power of x minus 1e e to the power of x is equal to 7e e to the power of x. Minus 1 times minus 2 is equal to 2. So the answer is 3e e to the power of x is equal to 1, e to the power of x is equal to 2, e to the power of x is equal 1 over 3, and uh, well let's do it up here. So this is nearly the answer, not quite, I know lots of students like leaving this as the answer. Remember you're looking for x, not e to the power of x. So if we get the natural log of both sides, we're left with x is equal natural log of 1 over 3. Natural log of both sides. We're left with x is equal natural log of 2. Now that could be our final answer, but I'm guessing an exam might be a little tricky here and tell you to leave your answer not as a fraction there. They'll, they'll warn you that the answer should be natural log of a natural number. So you might be worried this isn't right, but I would like you to notice that this is just natural log of 1 minus natural log of 3. Let me move this down here x is equal natural log of 2. That's the second one here. Again, then, we can notice the natural log of 1 is just 0 minus natural log of 3, which is just equal to minus the natural log of 3. So a really nice question would have been to tell you that the answer should have been a natural log b, where a and b are integers. So minus 1 is, would be in front of it, and plus, uh, plus 3 would be in the natural log. That would have been a really interesting twist at the end. Instead of natural log of a fraction. And lots of students would have said, well, this is wrong then. Fraction is not right. But fractions can be turned into whole numbers in logs. That's an interesting uh, part of it. Right, that's um, our final answers. I think I have everything there. This could be a decimal point. This could be a decimal point if you want. But I, I like this. This is more exact. X equals... If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. This is complicated stuff. Um, if you're unsure why I only got one answer instead of two, 
ask in the comments. I'll do my best to help. Until next time, have a good day.